Execution of death row inmate Marcellus Williams. Tonight, a Missouri man on death row is running out of time and down to his last option. Williams attorneys made a new filing asking the U.S. Supreme Court to stay his execution. State's high court denied an appeal which would have saved Marcellus Williams' life. This is a murder on their behalf, and this is wrong, you know. A miracle happens, you know what I'm saying? My father from abundance to enslavement and spare his life. I believe my father is truly innocent and they need to take a closer look. I'm standing firm and show my dad he's not alone. If this was it comes to, I would be a witness to it, to the ex My spirit, strong. Like, I'm doing this for my dad, it's bigger than me. So if this is the way that he going out, we already made peace. Ending while maintaining innocence. Marcellus Williams, a 55-year-old Missouri ending row inmate, is set to be slayed for the 1998 knifing of former reporter Lisha Gale. Despite his conviction, Williams has consistently maintained his innocence, emphasizing that no forensic evidence links him to the crime. If the ending proceeds, he will become the third inmate executed in Missouri this year, depending on whether he's declared dead before or after another ending in Texas. The St. Louis County Prosecutor's Office has expressed support for Williams' innocence claims, recently filing a motion to vacate his conviction. While a county judge initially agreed, Missouri Attorney General Andrew Bailey quickly contested the ruling. The case was sent back for review, and on September 12th, the judge reversed his earlier decision, allowing the ending to proceed. With the ending looming, Williams' attorneys and supporters continue to push for a reprieve, arguing that the wrong man may be paying the ultimate price for a crime he didn't commit. The final decision now rests with higher courts as time runs out. This is a murder on their behalf, and this is wrong, you know? A miracle happens, you know what I'm saying? My father from abundance to enslavement and spare his life. I believe my father is truly innocent and they need to take a closer look. I'm standing firm and show my dad he's not alone. If this was it comes to, I would be a witness to it, to the ex My spirit, strong. Like, I'm doing this for my dad, it's bigger than me. A troubled past. On the morning of August 11, 1998, Leisha Gale, a former St. Louis Post-Dispatch reporter, was home alone when an intruder broke into her private, gated residence. According to police, Gale had just left her shower and was descending the stairs when she encountered Marcellus Williams, who they say knifed her 43 times with a kitchen knife from her own home. Gale's husband, Daniel Pickus, found her body later that evening and called 911. The crime shocked the community and left a devastating hole in her family's life. The initial investigation collected several pieces of evidence from the scene, including bloody footprints, fingerprints, hair, and a knife sheath. However, none of these items forensically linked Williams to the slaying. Despite this, two informants, Williams' girlfriend, Lara Asaro, and fellow inmate Henry Cole came forward, identifying Williams as the slayer. Both were in legally precarious situations and stood to gain from cooperating with prosecutors. Based largely on their testimony, Williams was convicted of slaying and burglary, even though the physical evidence failed to tie him to the crime scene. Both informants have since passed away, and their credibility has been called into question by Williams' attorneys. Williams' conviction has been haunted by the lack of forensic evidence connecting him to the crime, raising concerns about the fairness of his trial. Let's get back to the breaking news. Where There's always a chance to change course, and, and that's what we hope we'll see. DNA evidence proves he's innocent. I spoke with William's lawyer about what's next in the fight for his release. And now we know that DNA testing from the knife that was found still protruding from the victim is also not his. Bloody shoe prints were not his. The fingerprints were not his. Hairs found in the victim's hands were not his. 17 years of Missouri's death row. Just last weekend, I celebrated my 21st year of being exonerated. At the end of the day, the criminal justice system has, a, has to have a component of finality. The, the evidence that that jury relied on and the victims. And I want to make sure that we always honor the victim's voice. His legal team has long argued that the informant's stories were inconsistent and may have been influenced by their desire to benefit from reduced sentences or rewards. Nevertheless, the jury convicted Williams and he has remained on ending row for more than two decades, despite mounting questions about his guilt. Born in South Bend, Indiana on December 30, 1968, Williams had a difficult upbringing. He moved to St. Louis with his mother and two brothers when he was about five years old. His childhood was marked with extreme poverty, abuse, and exposure to drugs, alcohol, and guns at a young age. Court records describe a home environment filled with violence and instability, with Williams suffering physical abuse. 
After his older brother, who had been a father figure to him, passed away in 1997, Williams spiraled into criminal activity, culminating in his conviction for robbing a St. Louis donut shop before being implicated in Gale slaying. Despite his troubled past, those who know Williams describe a different side of him. During the penalty phase of his slaying trial, family members and friends, including his son and stepdaughter, testified to his positive influence on his children. They emphasized the deep emotional impact his ending would have on his family. Since his incarceration, Williams has found solace in studying Islam and writing poetry, devoting his time to personal growth. Now, as his ending looms, the battle over his innocence continues. Advocates argue that executing Williams without clear forensic evidence of his guilt would be a grave miscarriage of justice. His legal team, supported by the Innocence Project, fights tirelessly to save his life and prevent what they call an irreversible injustice. He said, I struck a juror in part because he was a young black man with glasses. Every process always comes back to where it all began, and he was issued a death sentence. Our job is to execute that when the time comes. A last-minute appeal played out in the state's highest court today. Attorneys for Williams are also pleading to the United States Supreme Court. He said the quiet part out loud. He admitted that there was actually a racial component here, and that is unconstitutional. He admitted unequivocally that he struck a juror in part when the trial prosecutor was subjected to cross-examination. Uh, the prosecutor was not cross-examined. He was their witness. He said, no, absolutely not. We don't know what would have happened had that evidence not been mishandled, had it not, you know, not been lost. The ground zero for, for any work that we do to make sure that an innocent person is not um, incarcerated, but also not executed. A race against time. Williams has dodged demise twice before. His ending was first halted in January 2015 and again in August 2017. Both stays were ordered to allow for further DNA testing, and in 2017, then-Governor Eric Greitens appointed a board of inquiry to investigate his case. The inquiry, spurred by new forensic evidence, raised serious doubts about Williams' guilt. The most recent DNA test results did not match Williams' profile, instead revealing an unknown male's DNA on the knife used to slay Gale. However, despite these revelations, Missouri Governor Mike Parson dissolved the inquiry board in the summer of 2023 and lifted the stay, leaving Williams' fate in the hands of the courts. In January of this year, Williams' legal team filed a motion to vacate his conviction and sentence, citing the new DNA evidence and other concerns about the integrity of the original trial. St. Louis County prosecuting attorney Wesley Bell supported this effort, even reaching a groundbreaking agreement with Williams' attorneys. The deal, which would have allowed Williams to plead no contest to first-degree slaying in exchange for life in prison without parole, was approved by the victim's husband, Daniel Pickus. This agreement offered a potential resolution for all parties involved, sparing Williams from ending while acknowledging the ongoing questions about his guilt. Basically, Mr. Williams is going to be killed because the government mishandled this evidence. And he looked back at what his office did, and he said, yes, my office messed up. And the victim's families, and he does what the victim's families wants. The victim's family doesn't want this. Williams was convicted and sentenced to death in the 1998 stabbing death of Leisha Gale. Just a few days, the case of Marcellus Williams will return to court in a pivotal hearing that could determine his fate. A former social worker and St. Louis Post-Dispatch reporter. The upcoming hearing on August 21st will see Bell's and Bailey's offices present their cases before the court. St. Louis County Prosecutor Wesley Bell's office stated they are waiting to be heard by the court before addressing this matter publicly. However, the situation took another turn when Missouri Attorney General Andrew Bailey intervened, arguing that the original conviction should stand. Bailey accused Williams' defense team of fabricating a false narrative of innocence to manipulate the legal system for political gain. He demanded that the case be re-examined, and the judge who initially approved the plea, St. Louis County Circuit Judge Bruce Hilton, was ordered to hold an evidentiary hearing. During the August 28th hearing, even the retired prosecutor from the original trial admitted that key pieces of evidence were mishandled in 1998, further casting doubt on Williams' conviction. Despite this, Judge Hilton declined to overturn the slaying conviction and sentence on September 12th asserting that no court had formally found Williams to be innocent. He dismissed the DNA evidence, maintaining that Williams was guilty of first-degree slaying 
and reaffirming the ending sentence. Williams' attorney, Trisha Rojo Bushnell, criticized the decision, stating that her client's legal team would continue to file appeals and pursue clemency. Time, however, is running out. Unless the courts or Governor Parson intervene, Williams is scheduled to be executed this week. Based on this new DNA evidence that excluded Williams from the crime scene, tell us Williams has always maintained his innocence. Meanwhile, St. Louis Prosecuting Attorney Wesley Bell filed a motion to vacate Williams' conviction. We don't know what would have happened had that evidence not been mishandled, had it not, you know, not been lost. The ground zero for, for any work that we do to make sure that an innocent person is not um, incarcerated, but also not executed. This, the evidence and its mishandling definitely had an effect on um, the case overall, had it not been basically destroyed for, for evidentiary purposes. Today is a sad day for Missouri. It's a day that Missouri decided to tinker with. It's now saying, forget that. We're going to find you. We're going to kill you anyway. The day that they decided that a man who's, who's found innocent based on DNA evidence. His case is one of five endings planned in the U.S. within a six-day span. On Tuesday, Texas plans to execute Travis James Mullis, convicted of slaying his infant son at the same time as Williams' ending. Thursday will bring two more endings. Alabama plans to execute Alan Eugene Miller, for the 1999 slaying of three co-workers using nitrogen gas, a controversial method with disturbing results from previous endings. That same day, Oklahoma is set to execute Emmanuel Littlejohn for his role in the 1992 demise of a convenience store clerk, despite his claims that he wasn't the shooter. If all these endings proceed, the U.S. will have executed 18 inmates by the end of the week. Another six endings are scheduled before the year's end, with more potentially being added to the calendar. Williams' case, however, stands out for the questions that remain about his guilt. As his ending date draws near, his supporters continue to fight for a stay, hoping that justice will prevail before it's too late. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.